Hello and welcome. I'm here at Grangemouth in Scotland, outside our magnificent new building, to bring you the latest edition of InTV, the show that takes you inside INEOS. Coming up, after five years, the Ethan Import Project is finally live. We're on site as the first dragon makes its entrance. We spoke to industry leaders to get an outside opinion on the buzz around this new ethane supply. There should be a real sense of pride in Grangemouth in Scotland that this new source of ethane of raw material is coming to our country. We find out how other chemical plants in Scotland will also benefit. Our long-term agreement with INEOS provides a reliable supply of ethane via an existing pipeline to our plants here in Fife. And we were there to see the world's press get the chairman's take on things. The UK, as the fifth largest economy in the world, is too big for Europe to ignore. INEOS Insight is the first of the Dragon ships to arrive at Grangemouth, and such a momentous occasion requires celebration. So, INEOS put on a show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome then on this uh, historic day. Today we are going to be celebrating history being made. For the first time ever, US shale gas will be imported into the UK. The ship Ineos InSight is the first of many thousands of voyages of shipments that will link Grangemouth here in Scotland with Philadelphia in the United States and of course that wealth of US shale gas resource there. Today heralds a renaissance for Scotland's largest manufacturing site here at Grangemouth. It's a massive thing for a ship to come through the gates. It's it's, it's, it's exciting, it gives, us, it gives the place a future that we thought we were only going to have three years ago. Absolutely fantastic. I uh, couldn't imagine working anywhere else right now. For the first time in about a decade, we're going to be able to fill up our KG cracker, we're going to run at full rate, we're going to make profit, and we're actually going to be able to run uh, our derivative assets at full rate as well. So it really is a transformation of the future of this site. It's a major success story for UK manufacturing and it deserves to be in the limelight here in Scotland and across the UK today. Three years ago, Grangemouth was on its knees. It was suffering from dwindling raw materials coming from the North Sea, which is moving into its sunset years together with high costs. So today is truly a momentous day for Grangemouth and the 10,000 local people whose jobs depend upon it. We heard from John how this venture has really changed the fortunes here at Grangemouth, but its impact is being felt even further afield, as is evident in the new partnership between Grangemouth and the Fife ethylene plant at Moss Moran. The dwindling supply of North Sea gas is a problem that has spread throughout the chemical industry. 30 miles away from Grangemouth lies the Fife ethylene plant. The story there is the same. Over the last 10 years, both uh, facilities have been struggling for the same reasons in terms of losing feedstocks from the North Sea, but both have the same uh, issues with uh, dwindling supplies coming through. 30 years ago, when North Sea gas was in more plentiful supply, a pipeline was built to pump ethane from Moss Moran to Grangemouth. The pipeline was becoming obsolete, so a plan was formed to make use of the system and INEOS's newfound feedstock. So what we are doing as part of this project is we are going to export ethane from our 
ethane storage tank, our infrastructure. We're going to vaporise it and we're going to connect it into that existing pipeline and we're going to reverse the flow of that pipeline which allows us to transfer ethane from our tank here at Grangemouth to the facility at Musmona. Our long-term agreement with INEOS provides a reliable supply of ethane via an existing pipeline to our plants here in Fife. So to deliver our own project for Ethan to KG here has been a remarkable project, but to actually also take on this additional part of the project and deliver it in the timescale that we're targeting to deliver is, is actually quite remarkable also. This project shows Ineos's ambition. The Grangemouth import facility and Moss Morin is hugely beneficial to manufacturing and jobs in Scotland. And it's also because these derivatives go wider in Scotland to run other plants based on the ethylene that is used, it is widely beneficial to the whole of the UK. I'm joined here now by Kenneth Stevenson, who is the KG plant manager. The sites, uh, the, the bits that you're responsible for, have been not working at capacity for a very long time. That's correct, yes. 2008, train two was mothballed, um, so we're running on one train only. And to see train two going to come to life in the next few weeks is fantastic. And what will capacity be then? Are you 100%? Yeah, we'll go to 100%, yeah. I mean, we talk about dragon ships. Uh, KG is just a mythical beast waiting on the dragon. <laughs> what, what will it mean to the, the people that you work with, those that you see every day? Is there a, a spring in people's step now? Oh, yes, definitely. The people are looking forward to doing their job fully, to the capacity of what the plant can produce, um, and getting the ethylene out there and optimising it. Right now I want to bring in David Thompson, CEO of INEOS Trading and Shipping. David, afternoon, and Jacques de Chateauvieux, we're delighted, can join us. The chairman and CEO of JCAR Holdings, the owners of Evergas. Um, Jacques, a challenging project for you, but you must be terribly proud of what your company has achieved. Yes, I think that one of the most important feature was to be as efficient as INEOS wanted to be into this facility here. So we had to care for the shape of the vessel. We had to care for the engine that not only would be able to use two uh, fuel, including ethane, but also would be uh, very efficient from an emission and environment protection point of view. Um, David, what's been for you the most rewarding aspect of the project? It's really been the partnerships that we've been able to forge in delivering this project. So um, right through from the gas producers, the midstream companies, pipeline transportation companies such as Sunoco, um, Enterprise, Mark West, Range Resources, Consol. The partnerships we've put together and of course those with Jacques here in terms of the final step with the shipping. As David explained, this has been a truly global collaboration and its impact has been felt all over the world. We caught up with a variety of people from across the group to get their opinion on the whole thing. When I first understood what we were intending to do, I thought the challenges were enormous. We had two years to turn the site from loss-making to profit-making to bring about the survival of Grangemouth. I was present when the project was kicked off. And I have to say, I thought the timescales being talked about were incredibly over-ambitious. And yet they proved me wrong. The chemical sector globally is extraordinarily competitive and I have to say I think there should be a real sense of pride in Grangemouth in Scotland and frankly in Britain that this new source of, of ethane, of raw material, is coming to our country. Well the message is, is pretty clear that Enios is a leader that can execute projects on a global scale, that it's an innovator, that it's uh, also an entrepreneurial company. It says a lot about the company and it's, it actually says it's a great place to work how quickly it's came round and all the hard work that we've put in so far it's actually coming to light and it's really exciting. I think this is the, the first time that I felt the site has actually got a heartbeat back again. We've created a business that people do actually want to come and work for and people who are here want to stay and work for. Ineos supports about 9,000 jobs across Scotland and half of those are in our area and that's obviously very important for good quality local jobs. INEOS is a very innovative company, so they're exactly the kind of company that we as Scottish Enterprise want to be working with. A project five years in the making.
spanning three continents, involving tens of thousands of people. A project to secure the future of INEOS's European businesses is nearing completion. You know, one shouldn't underestimate the size of the achievement. It's required an immense amount of work, a lot of focus really, a lot of challenges. Fantastic achievement by the team. You've been literally counting down for two years this date and it's going to be transformational for the site. When that ship docks at the new jetty, it will be an emotional moment. Usually, at this stage of the show, it's time for our regular catch-up with Jim. But for this edition, we've already got the footage in the can. The questions this time came courtesy of the world's media, who came here to Grangemouth to get the scoop. Jim's Matthew, Sky News. Uh, Mr Radcliffe, Labour has said it will ban fracking. If a Jeremy Corbyn government is elected, what would your response be from an industrial point of view? And in the long term, if the Scottish government ultimately bans fracking, what will be the industrial implications for Grangemouth and further afield? The future for manufacturing in the UK, um, I think, will look quite gloomy, to be honest, if we don't exploit shale, because I can't see otherwise what is going to arrest the decline in British manufacturing. Shale glass clearly has that potential, because that's what we've seen in America with, you know, their energy costs coming down by two thirds and becoming much more competitive. That, that's what you, that's how you need to think about manufacturing reviving in the UK. How do you attract invest, manufacturing investment to the UK? Because if people don't invest, there aren't any jobs. You need to build factories or chemical plants or steel works or something. Otherwise, it just becomes a service economy. Um, Emily Goldstein from The Telegraph. Um, so I think you've previously criticised Hinkley, which we're expecting the UK government to sign off on um, in the next couple of days. Are you disappointed at that decision? Well, it's not terribly competitive. £95 a megawatt hour is, is horribly uncompetitive. I mean, take an example. We, INEOS bought into a nuclear power station in France that um, was built very recently. Then we signed up a 30-year agreement where we get fixed price electricity at 45 euros per megawatt hour. 45 euros, not pounds, euros, fixed for 30 years. Right? The UK is 95 pounds per megawatt hour index linked. Does this huge investment mean you're no longer interested in exploiting the, the, the local shale? In Scotland? Yes. No, I think um, we, we do have the licenses in Scotland and, and they're, you know, they're of great interest to us, but um, you know, there's nothing we can do. Um, there's, there's no point spending any money here in Scotland whilst there's a moratorium. So um, we, we equally have you know, a considerable number of licenses in England and England is very supportive of you know, The government in England is very supportive of shale. So, uh, you know, all our efforts and energies are focused in England, not Scotland. Hi there, Mark Hurst, uh, Sputnik News. Uh, you've touched on the political context in Scotland, but how big an impact is uh, the Brexit vote going to have on your future investment and your, your business plan going forward? I think ultimately our view is that common sense will prevail um, and we'll have a sensible arrangement with mainland Europe. Um, the UK, as the fifth largest economy in the world, is too big for Europe to ignore. So I think it's sort of mutually dependent and I think common sense will prevail um, as long as we retain our backbone in the negotiation. Some tough questions there. And now it's probably a good time to mention that Jim picked up a Lifetime Achievement Award in New York in September from ISIS magazine. I mean, it's a great honor to be, to, uh, to be the recipient of this uh, wonderful award. It was voted on by the most influential figures in the chemical industry, so not easy to get. It's also a global award, and Jim is the first Brit ever to receive it. And now for something completely different. Next month, we're hoping to raise some money for the Movember Foundation, which promotes men's health. They're best known for their annual sponsorship campaign, encouraging men to grow moustaches in November. But we want to do something a bit different, reverse Movember. So we're looking for volunteers to shave off their fine moustaches, so dig deep and get sponsoring. INEOS will double the money raised and send it over to the foundation. Now let's get back to the docks at Grangemouth and see where that ship has got to.
This site has always been a very big part of the Scottish economy. It's been a very big part of the UK economy. And our plans are to clear off old kit that we have no longer need for and to rebuild this site to be a powerhouse for Scotland, powerhouse for the UK going forward. So all of this comes back to we've got an exciting path forward. And when our ship comes in, all of that will be made true. So there you have it, the first shipment of US ethane into Grangemouth, fueling our jobs, our economy and our futures. It's an exciting time here, and if you want to find out what lies around the corner for INEOS, then join us next time on INTV.